Hey guys, we're going to go over some of the uh, rebuild strategies that we like to use for our joint assemblies. We have three different style joints based on size and application that you'll actually want to use for rebuilding your joints. Um, you know, your 7 8 your 3 quarter, and your track bar joints all take the same rebuild components and use the same rebuild strategy. You know, the older joint assemblies used red Loctite on the threaded retainers and the set screws that were in the joints to make sure they stayed together. Besides the mechanical fastening, we had that as well. You'll need to actually apply heat to the retainers and the set screws to back them out. The newer raceways that we've had now have grease channels, friction brakes, and friction modifiers. So when you're putting these together, you'll notice that there's three holes for the assembly to line up with the Zerk fitting itself. So when you're putting these together, the best thing to do is pop these over the ball, or I, I apologize, you know, apply a little bit of, you know, some light lubrication to either the ball or the raceways. That, that'll help you get started without having a dry assembly. Pop what we call the raceways over the shoulders of the ball and line up the grooves so they line up together. When you slide them into the housing, do the best you can to line up the two holes you lined up with the raceways with the Zerk fitting, Zerk fitting hole. This will assure you that making it easy as possible for grease to flow through the joint. You'll take your threaded retainers, which again, over the years, we've had some different threaded retainers. These now have four flats in them to engage the set screws. So for your average consumer joint, you do not need to apply a full complement of red Loctite anymore or use red Loctite on the set screws. So go ahead and get these started. You can use a standard jaw vise to hold the joint in place, or we're gonna simply use an assembly table fixture that we use here uh, to assemble the joint. Use spanner tool, engage it in the teeth, and we're just gonna tighten it down a little bit just to show you a basic pre-assembly. Now we're gonna talk about torquing the joints. For the small joints, again, the three-quarter, seven-eighths, and track bar joints, you want to torque to 25 foot-pounds. That's going to set the preload for the retainers. We'll flip it over. Make sure you get each side to 25 foot-pounds. And this is actually a dial indicator, not a, a click one, because this is actually used for setting our normal production tools. We use Ingersoll Rand shutoff guns for speed at all of, all of our assembly benches. Again, I'm just gonna check the other side. There we go. Now, I'm gonna check out the joint itself. Now the wrench flats or the set screw flats in the joint housing will not exactly always line up with the set screw hole position. So what we recommend you do is apply a little bit more preload or torque to the joint itself, to the retainers, to ensure that the set screws drop into the wrench flat section. Again, never loosen, only tighten. With the new raceways, we've also changed the set screws from black oxide to stainless steel. The only reason we're doing that is so we have a visual aid on knowing who's got an upgraded raceway section. Apply a dab of blue Loctite to your set screws. Go ahead and get them started. Then for the set screws, you'll tighten with the 50 to 60 inch pounds, making sure they drop into the flat section. 50 to 60 inch pounds is not a huge number, but with Loctite and the flats engaging, 
it is certainly more than enough to hold your joint together. Now, with these new raceways, again, as you can see, there's grease screws, friction brakes, and friction modifiers in the newly tooled up raceways. This allows you to flow grade zero and grade one grease through the joint assemblies. Do not use red and tacky or wheel bearing grease. We will probably stress on that at least three times for every joint assembly. That is too thick, that is a metal to metal bearing grease, and it can displace the raceways. Again, do not do so. So this covers your standard three quarter, seven eighths, and track bar joints. All right guys, so now we're gonna start the rebuilding of the larger joints. Your one inch, your inch and a quarter, and your inch and three eighths shank joints. To get them apart is very similar to how we explained to get the smaller joints apart. The older methodology used red Loctite on the retainers and the set screws. So you'll need to apply heat to those areas to soften the, the red Loctite, back out the set screws, back out the thread of retainers, blow the joints apart. Your typical rebuild kit for the large joints will be simply two raceways and two washers that we are supplying in the kit, as well as two stainless steel set screws. Once you get it apart, we recommend you apply a little bit of grease or lubricant to the ball so you're not working with a dry assembly. Slide the two raceways over the ball assembly, line up the grease entry holes as best you can with the zerk hole, apply one of the, the washers, start your threader retainer. You'll notice some of the older threader retainers did not have the wrench flats in them. You can certainly upgrade to those now for engaging the set screws so you don't have to go back to using red Loctite again. Make sure to try to balance them out. Again, the washer, the threader retainer, and tighten it up. The large joints, the one inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and three eighths shank joints, threaded retainers, all get torqued to 20 foot pounds. Once these are torqued, again, you will notice the odds are that the flat sections is not going to line up exactly with the set screw area. Go ahead and advance or tighten the retainer on each side until it lines up with the set screw hole. This will ensure proper engagement of the set screw. Once you line up the set screws with the flats in the retainers, go ahead and apply a dab of blue Loctite to the set screw bolts. And again, part of these kits is the stainless steel set screws. The stainless steel set screws indicate to us that you have the newer raceways versus the older black oxide set screws that were used prior. And again, torque these set screws to 50 to 60 foot pounds. Now, with the new raceways for the one inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and three eighths joints, you can flow through up to grade two grease, zero, one, and two through these joints. Do not use red and tacky grease. That is a wheel bearing grease. It will displace or can displace the raceways should not be used in these joints. Next up, we're gonna do a ProFlex housing, which is very similar to the larger joints. Still uses the 20 foot-pounds of torque, flows up to grade two grease. Again, do not use red and tacky grease. Now for the ProFlex joints, you're gonna be, again, make sure if you have a long arm system, you're putting in the red, which is a slightly firmer durometer bushing. If you have a mid arm or short arm system, you're gonna be going with the black. 
The only variant here is all three quarter ton trucks use the red, whether it be a short arm or a long arm. Same as the one inch, inch and a quarter, or inch and three eighths joints. You'll need to actually pop these over the ball with either a arbor press or in a vise, just squeeze them together, pop them over the shoulders of the ball. Line up the grease entry holes drop them into the housing, doing the best you can to line up the grease entry holes with the Zerk fitting. With this Pro Flex joint housings, there is no washer. You just have threaded retainers. The threaded retainers now come with the flats for engaging the set screws, just like all the other joint housings. If you do not have the fl machine flats into the threaded retainers, which would indicate a pretty old joint assembly, you can either upgrade to the current style by getting the new threaded retainers, which do not cost a tremendous amount of money, or you can simply go back to the old style of retaining them with a full complement of red Loctite and then red Loctite on the stainless steel set screws that were supplied. And again, the reason that we are putting the stainless steel set screws in there, it is a quick visual aid to us indicating that you have the newer style raceways in these joints with the grease grooves, the friction brakes, and the friction modifiers. The Pro Flex end, just like the larger joints, gets torqued to 20 foot-pounds of torque, and it also flows up to a grade two grease. Again, do not, and I repeat, do not put red and tacky wheel bearing grease into these joints. It is not approved and not advised. Now for the racing applications on the larger joints, the inch, inch and a quarter and inch and three-eighths shank joints, you can torque up to 25 foot-pounds just like you do on the smaller joints. All of this is based on surface friction on the ball. The larger the ball, the greater the surface area, the less torque required to adhere a certain amount of surface friction. So keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. And just to reiterate, again, the track bars, the 7 8 and 3 quarter joints can flow up to a grade 1 grease, 0 and 1 now. You're not limited to triple zero grade grease. The 1 inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and 3 8 as well as the Pro Flex housings, can flow up to a grade 2 grease. So now you can go to your normal store and just buy a grease right off the shelf. No longer are you required to buy triple zero grade grease from Rock Crawler after you do the rebuild. If your joints still have the black oxide set screws and do not have the stainless steel set screws, you will still need to run the triple zero grade grease until you do a rebuild down the road. Again, the visual aid for you as to what grease you can use, black oxide set screws versus stainless steel set screws. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Thank you.